of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Welcome to a new episode on Pentecost. Today we reflect on the power of Christianity and the abolition of impossibility. The resurrection was so powerful that it reminded us of the words of the Bible, with men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. This power which amazed Paul, the apostle, that he said about the Lord, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. What powerful words. God has granted us that power of his resurrection that everything became possible with the believer. About this matter, St. Paul the Apostle said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. After the Lord has trampled death, there is nothing difficult or impossible before us now. He gave us victory over it and opened the locked gate of paradise. He put that nice song in our tongues, O death, where is your sting? Hades, where is your victory? The power of the resurrection encouraged the disciples and gave them boldness to preach the gospel. Who could think that those weak persons who had hidden in the attic could preach the gospel publicly and without opposition? Who could think that 12 men, most of them were ignorant fishermen, can spread Christianity all over the world? The resurrection has taught us that there is nothing impossible. With God, everything is possible. It is possible for the foolish things of the world to shame the wise and the weak things of the world to shame the strong. It seemed very difficult for Christianity to stand against paganism and the ancient religions whose roots were mixed and stable in men's creeds. Moreover, it seemed difficult to oppose or stand against Judaism, which tried to exterminate or to extirpate Christianity. It also seemed difficult to stand against the philosophers which were prevalent at that time or against the Roman Empire with its tyranny and its armed forces. It seemed difficult for Christianity to face all these powers and the overcome them, but the power they received from the resurrection of Christ and his triumph over death gave them an admirable energy. Who could think that Peter, the ignorant fisherman, can with one sermon transmute 3,000 Jews to Christian faith? A famous, eloquent preacher needs great effort to turn with one sermon, some sinners to repentance, but to let 3,000 persons change their religion after listening to one sermon seems to be something imaginative. It is the power which the apostles received from the Holy Spirit and which changed them before they could change the people. It remained with them and with it they did miracles. Who could think that those apostles go to foreign countries where there was not even one Christian? No possibilities to perform religious service and in spite of all these difficulties, they began from naught and could change the inhabitants' religion into Christianity. Indeed, the resurrection taught us that there is nothing difficult and that everything is possible with the believer. Who could think that Saul from Tarsus, the most enormous persecutor of his time against Christianity, becomes Paul, the greatest apostle who evangelized Christianity? Who could think that the centurion, the general of the soldiers who crucified Christ, adopted Christianity and died as a martyr because of it, became a saint. Who could think that the robber on the right believes when he was on the cross? 
who could think that Pilate's wife believes and asks her husband for the sake of that righteous one, with grace of God, everything becomes possible. God is capable of everything. He who overcomes death, the most dangerous enemy, has the power to overcome any difficulty. Everything is quite easy before him. Who could think that Mary Magdalene, in whom there were seven devils, becomes a preacher and announces good news of the resurrection to the apostles? This power of the resurrection assured us there is nothing impossible. What we saw in preaching, we witnessed in repentance. Power of repentance, which changed the worst sinners into the greatest saints. And not to me, repentance taught us that there is nothing impossible. The utmost thing men expected from Augustine was his repentance. But to become a saint by whom the generations benefit was something difficult, not expected by anyone. The same thing can be said about Moses the Black, the killer, who became a modest, meek and humble saint. Nothing is difficult before God. Isn't he who said, What are you, O mighty mountain? Before Zerubbabel you shall become a plain. God who makes the barren a rejoicing mother with sons and says to her, Sing, O barren, you who have not born, enlarge the place of your tent, for you shall expand to the right and to the left, and your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. Christ's birth, as well as his resurrection, were wonderful and strange events which prove that there is nothing impossible. His miracles also prove the same thing. The act of the incarnation seemed, in men's view, to be something impossible. How can God make himself nothing and take the very nature of a bondservant? How can a virgin become pregnant and give birth to a child without matrimony. So the crucifixion was something impossible. Hence the Jews were afraid lest it should take place and considered it worse than the first deception. In spite of all that, incarnation took place. The Virgin gave birth to a child and the resurrection did happen. Christianity is not a religion of weakness, but a religion of strength. It gives man wonderful energies. It cancels the word impossible. Christianity is the religion of power. There is nothing difficult in Christianity. In it, there is neither despondency nor failure. Thought I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. There are some things that seem difficult in Christianity, such as the cross, the narrow gate, and in spite of that, the Christians carry the cross and entered through the narrow gate, chanting the words of the apostle, and his commandments are not burdensome. Well, that's all we have for you today. God bless you and see you tomorrow in a new episode on Pentecost.